Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to session three of day three of Azure Data Week. This session is on Power BI Real Level Security by Nick Lee. I'm not going to hold us up any longer. So if you guys need anything during the session, please put it in the chat. But Nick, go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. Thank you, Liz. I really appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Uh, like Liz says, my name is Nick Lee. I'm a consultant over here at Pragmatic Works, and we're going to be talking about some real level security today. Uh, so real level security is a really hot topic. It's brought up all the time. They're always making changes to the functionality and things you can do with it. Over the last year, I know there's been tons of changes uh, that people are very happy about when it comes to real level security, and we are going to kind of give you guys the rundown. Uh, the basics to more of like an advanced level of real level security. And the point of real level security, if you don't know what it is, it's a way to restrict access in your data model to certain rows of data. For instance, if, if certain people are only supposed to see certain amounts of data, like, uh, you know, let's say I lived in and worked in the Northeast region of the United States as like a salesperson, I should only be able to see sales information for the Northeast region of the United States, even though we have the same data model being used for every sales representative, regardless of where they are. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about real level security. There's very basic levels to it and there's a lot more advanced levels to it. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of dive right in here. Let me get this going. There we go. All right. So uh, real quick about me to give you a little rundown about myself. I am a super huge nerd. Uh, it's actually what got me into this field to begin with. I love researching and playing like video games and board games. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nerd through and through. Uh, and yeah, that's how I kind of got started with uh, data analytics from studying research and researching probabilities on stuff like Dungeons and Dragons dice rolls and and World of Warcraft, you know, who, who could perform the best and stuff like that. So that's kind of like my background got me into this field. Like I said, I'm a consultant. I also have done a lot of training here at Pragmatic Works. I d d am a technical editor of books. Uh, one of the most recent books I've worked on was a Power BI Quick Start Guide that several of us worked on here in uh, at Pragmatic Works. And name, names in the books, always having fun being able to point that out to you know family, friends, colleagues, say, hey, my name's in the book, so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I also do a lot of presentations at places like the Jacksonville SQL Server User Group. I participate there, like SQL Saturdays. I did a presentation at SQL Saturday this year. Uh, I also do like a local user group, Power BI user group for Jacksonville. Yes, Jacksonville, Florida is where I'm from. Uh, I'm actually doing a presentation for pa Jacksonville Power BI user group tomorrow uh, here locally. Uh, I also do blog. I, I don't blog as much as I wish I did, but that is one of the things that I hope to start blogging a lot more. So if you like the style of this presentation and how I present things, check out my blog. It's back to sequel.wordpress.com. Also check out my Twitter. My Twitter handle is at back to sequel and you can reach out to me there or you can follow me there. Uh, and you know, you can see a all kind of updates I post. I post a lot of updates on, you know, new Power BI happenings and new, basically anything in the Microsoft BI stack I tend to uh, tweet about. All right, so let's talk about a little bit about the agenda for what this presentation is. We are talking about row level security. We're going to learn what row level security is, and we're going to talk about making like a basic setup for real level security, you know, adding, you know, individual fields, hard coding some values in there, and then making it more dynamic. Because when you're talking basic real level security and hard coding values, we're saying, all right, this person can see this role, and this person is in this role, and this person is in this role. But that's not really scalable. You know, once you get like hundreds or thousands of employees, you know, you can't manually set all that up. And then you know, what if someone changes roles throughout your company? Like if I was in the Northeast region of the United States and I moved to the Western United States, you know, I wanted to be able to dynamic and automatically assign those roles to me uh, as needed. So that's just some kind of ideas about, uh, you know, what we're going to be going over in this class. So what is Power BI Real Level Security? Well, first off, Real Level Security gives the ability to restrict specific rows of data from being viewed by your end users. So when you publish out a report to the Power BI service, you can restrict what data gets seen there. Now, you can have everyone in your company looking at the same exact report, but due to the security settings you have in place, their visualizations would be different on that report. 
this is not the same as setting up, you know, access to a report or access to a dashboard or a workspace or sharing any kind of Power BI apps. It's not the same. You know, we're not ta we're not talking about, you know, restricting access to where, you know, only I could see this report and my colleague cannot see the report at all. So we're talking about we're talking about p multiple people viewing the same exact report, just that report security setting settings at the data model level are different. All right, so that's what we're talking about here today. All right, so how does it work? How does role-level security work? It works by, first you create a role in the Power BI desktop, that's step one. And step two is you assign users or groups of users to that, that security setting, that role that you have set up actually in the Power BI service. So regardless of how simple or complex your real level security settings are, it's always kind of kind of be this two-step process. This two-step process is in you add a role in the desktop and Power BI desktop, and then you assign people to that role in the Power BI service. It's always going to be those two steps. You cannot get around this. So basically, this is what the idea of like a basic level of real level security looks like. You can see on the screen, I have a little example of something that we're going to get into a little bit here. Um, a basic, basic role level security setup is basically just a hard coded, you know, role, role defined definition here. You know, like for instance, on the screen, you can see that, you know, I have a county and state of Duval, Florida. Again, that's where I'm from, Jacksonville, Duval. Um, we are... We could set up some type of little example with that, you know, and set up an individual role for each county that we're talking about. Let's say, you know, we're, we only have four or five counties in our data model. We can assign specific people to those specific counties. Uh, again, this is a basic because, you know, when we're talking counties of the entire United States, there's more than four or five, and it would not be scalable to set this up in such a way for every county in the United States. You'd have you know, hundreds or thousands or however many counties there are. I don't even know how many counties there are. You know, you'd set up way too many. So we're in the end, we're going to make it dynamic. But this is a basic side of how we're doing things. So we're going to jump into our first little demo here. We're going to have, we're going to have several demos that we're going to be going through. This is our first demo that I have uh, ready for you guys. And let me go ahead and pull that up. All right, so I already have a uh, Power BI report kind of set up to kind of take off where we're going with this. What this is, this is just, this is all just Medicare data. It's public information uh, that you could extract from data.gov. Anyone could see this, so there's nothing private. This is just example data of public information that's out there. And what this is, is this has, you know, Medicare data of per hospital. So this little column chart I had down here, like I said, the information isn't super important. We could see average spendings per ship to the hospital, uh, per hospital that we have here per uh, patient. And we have, you know, different types of uh, different types of claim types available that we see in this bar chart on the right hand side. We also see this map and this map contains a, um, it's a, it's a map of data per county that we have available to us in this data set. As well as you can see, we have a huge list of alphabetized counties on the left side of, you know, all these counties that we had this Medicare information on. And it's searchable as well. For instance, like if I search for Duval County, I could select Duval County and here's Duval County and the associated hospitals that has to do with this Medicare data. But let me just clear that selection out. And delete that. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our first basic level, basic type of row level security. This is how you always start. You always start your basic row level security by first going to this modeling tab. This modeling tab is where you start. So if you go there, then there's this button that says manage roles under the security section. If you select manage roles, we see this manage roles pop-up window. And in here, there's nothing here, but it's a completely fresh, you know, row level security setting set up here. I have it set up in such a way where we can just kind of take off and start creating some, uh, start creating some roles here. So I could create my first role 
And let's say, you know, like I was talking about, let's make this first roll for Duval County, uh, like we were just talking about, because that's where I'm from. And, you know, it's, I'm very familiar with that data. So I could call this roll whatever I want. Now, when I, I, when I say that, I could literally call it anything for this role, but I want it to, you know, mean something uh, for me so I could recognize it later because you can create multiple roles. But whenever you actually call the role, you know, when you deploy this out, your users aren't going to see the name of it. So it's important to name these roles according to uh, what you need as a developer from the from a development standpoint. Like I said, it's important to name them, you know, so you could recognize them, recognize them and modify them as you see fit. So and what this is, is when you're using role level security to create roles. And now th this is very common too. a lot of people will say role level security. That's a bit of a misnomer, but it's kind of right. But, you know, in, in proper uh, proper context here, you know, it is row level security and we're creating a role in it called Duval County. And how this works is just how row level security works are just DAX expressions. That's that's straight up what it is. It is just a DAX expression. So my, my DAX expression here, uh, I could create one however I want. I could start writing it from scratch here, or I could kind of use the GUI here, my little interface that I have, to kind of help me write that code a little bit. So, for instance, if I click on this little ellipses, this tiny, tiny, you know, Microsoft TM uh, ellipses here, ellipses TM, whatever you want to call it, I can click on that ellipses, and I can hit add a filter. I want to add a filter to this table that I have. This table is called Hospital General Information. I want to add a filter to it on the county name. Actually, not, not county name. I apologize. County state. I want to be a little more granular and, and specify which state I'm, I'm filtering down to as well as the county. So, I want to kind of have these counties set up here is I have it set up in such a way where it is county, comma, space, state, state abbreviation. So when I add this filter in, I can remove this section that says value and I could enter Duval, comma, space, FL. This is actually exactly how it looks just like this in my actual uh, data model. In the table itself, this is the, the, the format it is in. Now, this is a DAX expression, which means that you have to write it exactly the same as it is in your tables. Now, what I mean by that is, is you know, the syntax has to be the same. If you have commas, you have to have a comma. If you have a space, you have to have a space. The lettering has to be the same. But because it's DAX, remember, DAX is not case sensitive. It's only case sensitive to very specific functions. All right. And we don't have any of those specific functions here. So I could write Duval Florida in all caps. I could write it on lowercase. I could go crazy with the capitalization if I want. It doesn't matter because it's DAX. But otherwise, it has to be exactly the same other than casing. All right. So I could do that. I could hit this little check mark up here to make sure, you know, my DAX expression, you know, isn't completely broken. I didn't get any pop ups or errors or anything like that. So I know it's good. And I can go ahead and hit save. Now, what you're going to notice here is that. Nothing actually changes. Yeah, some of my visualizations just reloaded a second there, but nothing actually changes here because I don't have anything assigned to this role and I'm not doing anything with that role yet. It still shows everything. So when in the service, when someone logs in and they have access to the Duval County uh, role that we have set up, then it'll only show Duval County information. But in here, we could actually test it. We can test that role level security that we just kind of set up here. So what I could do with that is I can actually go up back to that security section in the modeling tab and select this option for view as roles. What view as roles means is you can actually test the role to make sure it's working as intended. You're going to be using this a lot, right? So if I hit view as roles, I could choose the Duval County role I just created and hit OK. There it is, Duval County and all of its glory. So if I was restricted to uh, seeing only Duval County at the Power BI service level, this is what my report would look like. Notice that my slice are on the left side. There's nothing else. There's no other selections here for me to do, only Duval County, because I created this role just specifically for Duval County. And we can actually modify that role a little bit. Let's actually just change it up and see what other options that we can maybe add to it or something like that. So I'm gonna let this page reload. There it goes. I'm gonna go back into manage roles. And you can add multiple filters to this same table. Notice how this little filter icon here is next to the hospital general, general information table. Notice it's next to it and uh, with it next to it like this, the saying this table is being filtered down, but we could add more filters. For instance, if I hit the ellipses 
and hit add filter and i want to add another county for instance i can do this uh, there's a neighboring county to duval called clay county so i'm going to check that so i'm looking at a filter for both duval county and clay county so if i hit save and then view as roles if i want to test that that kind of county thing i set up it's actually going to not work all right, and I did this intended. I promise this was intentional. The reason why this does not work because the 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 operator that I used in creating this role was an ampersand for or double ampersand, which means and, which means that I am restricting to my data to I can only see hospital information where each record participated in both Clay County and Duval County, which isn't really possible in a hospital. I mean, I guess supposedly it is possible. I don't really know the specifics about it, but it, from a logical standpoint, it doesn't make sense, right? So what I could do instead of having and or Duval and Clay County, I could actually change this double ampersand icon to double pipe delimiters. And a double pipe delimiter is the, is the icon for or the uh, uh, the syntax for or operator. It's for the or operator. So if I switch it to double pipe delimiter and then hit save, now this role could see both Clay County and Duval County. All right. So that's kind of set up that way. Another thing you could do is you could actually set up multiple roles. So let me actually just get rid of this, this Clay County that I added here. And then that's good to go. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm actually going to create one more one more role here. I'm just going to call it Florida, or maybe I'm going to call it Florida State because you know keep the nomenclature the same. So this next role I'm setting up is to restrict the data set to only be able to viewable in Florida. So I can actually click that little you know Microsoft ellipses here next to Hospital General Information. Hit Add Filter. Go to State where the state value equals FL. And I can hit Save. Well, I'm still viewing as this old role. And you could actually test multiple roles at the same time. So if I hit view as roles here, I could actually select both Duval County and Florida State. I can select both Duval County and Florida State, but there's a little bit of interesting interesting uh, type of behavior here. So if I hit OK, what you're going to see is, you know, you're going to see all of Florida, all the information I have on Florida. So this is a rule of thumb. If you have multiple, if you have someone assigned to multiple roles or multiple roles are being testing, tested at the same exact time, it's always going to pick the role that has the highest level of granularity to be shown. Logically speaking, it makes sense. All right. I want to look at all of Florida and I want to look at all of Duval County. Well, Duval County is in Florida, so it's going to show everything. All right. So that's just a little just a little tidbit there. Uh, but if I can, I can go and hit stop viewing. So what I could do with this now, I can actually publish this out to the service and assign roles to it or people to these roles. So what I can do is I go to the home tab at the top and select this little publish icon that everyone should be familiar with. If you're taking this real level security class, hopefully you're familiar with this publish uh, action here. And I'm going to deploy this out to the Power BI service and then we're going to pull it up on the service to test it out. So I already created a workspace just for this, Azure Data Week, Row Level Security Workspace. I'm going to select it, and I am going to publish out our first little demo to the service. Now, if I go a little fast on this, I apologize. We do have a lot to, to, uh, to cover here. This is all going to be recorded, and there is actually going to be quite a bit of DAX in this class while that's loading here. Now I'm talking about this. There is quite a little bit of DAX in this class as well, and it's going to be hard to kind of follow along a little bit, but... Have no fear, these are being recorded. So if you, if you have access to it now, if you're here right now, this video is going to be recorded and you're going to be able to view it later and kind of catch up on some of that DAX information. All right, so here we are. Well, I'm already in that that uh, workspace that I have created, ADW, RLS, and we can see my report and my data set here are published out. And I am going to go ahead and modify some security settings for this. Now, you could actually access this a couple different ways. You could do it directly from the workspace, you know, kind of high-level view here. I can select data sets on the top tab. I click the little Microsoft ellipses and go to security, or I could go down to this data set section and select the ellipses there, do the same thing and choose the option for security. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna choose security. And we see those two roles that I just created, Duval County and Florida State. Now from here is actually where you assign people to those roles. Because if you actually don't assign people to those roles, those roles aren't gonna do anything. They're just gonna be there in the background and nothing's actually happening. 
So one of the cool things about this is you can actually add entire groups of people in from your Azure Active Directory to this, or you could assign individual users. For instance, I could assign Brian Knight to this individually by you know by himself if I wanted to, or I could go ahead and assign the entire Pragmatic Works Consulting Department to this. I can go ahead and hit Add. So everyone that's in the Pragmatic Works Consulting Department here at my company in my Azure Active Directory, I can go and assign them to this kind of Duval County role here. And I have this Florida State one I could do as well. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hit Save there to make sure it saves that information. I can assign people here different groups of people or whatever it is, I could assign them to that. It's certainly possible. Another cool thing you could do here is, you know, if you assign people to a group and you're not part of the group, you can't really see it. But we can also test these roles to make sure they're working as intended. So I can hit this little uh, Microsoft ellipses next to Duval County and hit test as role. So I can hit test as role. And in the service, this is what the report looks like if you're assigned to that Duval County role. If you're assigned to that Duval County role, you can only see Duval County and there's nothing you could do about it, All right? That's it, that's just how it works. Uh, so we can see this is working as intended. So anyone that is part of that 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 uh, Pragmatic Works Consulting Group, when they log in here, they're only gonna be able to see this county. And remember, like you could assign multiple people at a time to one role, you could assign one person, you can assign multiple groups, you can do all kinds of different things. One person could be in multiple different roles as well. Let's say you have a Northeast region and a Southeast region and a Western and Central and all these different things. And I was in the Northeast and Central United States for sales, I could actually be part of two different groups and just see Northeast and Central at the same exact time. Pretty nifty. All right, so that's that. We can test. We're testing it here. We can see it's working as intended. So that's that's great. And that's like basically the most basic version of real level security that we got. So let me move this stuff out the way. I'm actually going to go ahead and close this example down, and let's move on in PowerPoint a little bit here. One of the problems with basic real level security is something that I already pointed out, and that is that the fact that you have basic, you know, if you have to assign people to each individual region or county or 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 whatever it is, whatever it is, you're going to have a million different roles depending on how large or how many different demographics you have throughout your company. So if you do it like this basic way, you're gonna have to create a new role for every different scenario of security that you need. And this would this would require continuous maintenance because like I said, you could change roles in your company. I could move from Northeast United States to Central United States and that needs to be changed, but it would be too difficult to always you know, micromanage people in the service to change what role they're in. So we're gonna talk a little bit about dynamic security here. Now, how dynamic security works, it actually captures the user that's currently logged into the Power BI report. So then I don't actually have to hard code, you know, like, all right, Nick, he can only see Duval. I can actually make it dynamic and I can have it look up a table and say, oh, Nick's logged in. What county does he have access to? Oh, he has access to Duval County. So we can actually pull that up just like that. It actually checks, like I said, it checks permission to actually against the table that's currently in that data model. Now, this matches the user's login to a T. So when you're when I type, say login, I mean login to the Power BI service. Now, this is all integrated with Azure and your Azure Active Directory. So everyone should have the same exact sign in uh, on the Power BI service as is in your Azure Active Directory. And that's how this works. And this works based off of two core functions here. Uh, you can use either one, but generally the best practice is to use user principal name. User principal name, a lot of times is more exact. And you actually get the, the more proper information a lot of the times. Uh, username was used at first, but user principal name is newer. And like I said, it's more precise. Uh, so we typically use user principal name. There are some fringe case scenarios that I'm not going to get into right now because of time of where you would actually use username over user principal name. But like I said, it's a fringe case. Uh, nine times out of 10, or maybe even more than that, you're actually going to be using uh, user principal name instead. So let's do a little, uh, little, you know, walk through on making a dynamic Power BI real level security setup. So I already have, again, I already have a, uh, I already have a data model set up. This looks 
Very similar to the one we had before, this little report that we had here, though there are a few changes. Primarily, the changes are actually in the data itself, in the data model. So if I look at my data view tab on the left side and under hospital general information, I actually added some columns here that weren't there before. Actually, just some doctor names, and of course, this is fictitious. I made this up, so I'm a doctor in here, and I also added a doctor email column. Any of these doctors that we have, we have a few consultants that, like I said, I just kind of put some put some names in here. This is all fictitious. So I have, you know, Adam Jorgensen, Brian Knight, Paul Turley in here as doctors, and you know, we we have this kind of set up in such a way where you know we all demand certain different counties that are in our groups and that's kind of the difference in the data view here that we have before so also in the uh, actual model view this is what our tables look like our two different tables we have a simple one single direction one to many relationship uh, based on the name of the hospital uh, that we have kind of set up here. So that's how this is basic, you know, type of data model set up. We're going to get more complex as this presentation goes. But like I said, this is a pretty simple setup. As you can also see here, I had these two little, oops, that's huge square. There we go. I have these two little measures. Let me zoom in a little bit here. These two measures that are just, you know, representing uh, the username and user principal name. They are just that. All they have is the uh, selection of, you know, username function and user principal name functions to capture uh, who is currently logged in at the time. All right. So let's go ahead and get back to it and add a dynamic security role. So if I go up to the modeling tab again, we go back to that manage roles button. This is, you better get used to that. This is what this whole presentation is about, is leveraging this manage roles button. So we're going to go into manage roles. Notice there's no filter set up currently. I can select create. I can create a new manage role. And this time we're doing dynamic stuff, right? So let's call this role dynamic security. And in this, I'm actually going to create a, instead of a uh, filter based on the county, I am going to look up the actual uh, doctor email of whoever signed in at the time, right? I am going to look up the doctor email. So instead of hard coding, oh, I'm creating this role for Nick in Lee at PragmaticWorks.com and I have to create one for everyone. I'm actually going to just delete this whole section here with double quotes and everything like that because we're actually going to make this dynamic. So where the doctor email equals the user principal name function. Now, like I said, the user principal name is a lookup function. It looks up whoever is currently signed in at the time to this Power BI report. And it's pretty awesome. Works really well. All right. So one thing to keep in mind here, notice that I had to type that out manually. Uh, again, that so you could write this all lowercase if you wanted to, all uppercase. It's just best practice. All your functions should be written in uppercase, blah, blah, blah. Also, you would probably notice that there was no IntelliSense there. Unfortunately, DAX expressions in row level security has no intelligence. It doesn't help you write it whatsoever. And if you mess up, it's kind of hard to figure it out. So what a lot of people do is they will actually write these, these filters in actual measure because the measure helps you write it and it still works. And then once you have it finished in the measure, you just copy and paste that code right here into this DAX expression. That's a very common thing that a lot of people do. And I actually highly recommend doing that if you are diving into this for the first time, especially if you're not super duper comfortable with uh, writing DAX exactly how it's supposed to be in a syntactual level. All right. So this is all set up. I am going to be looking at, you know, who's currently logged in at the time. I'm going to hit save. And I am currently set up in here to only view certain states and certain uh, counties within certain states. But unfortunately, that's not going to work exactly. And let me show you why. This could be a little bit hard to test on the actual desktop version when you make it dynamic. The reason why it's hard to test is because it's looking up who's actually signed in to this Power BI report right now. Well, who's signed in? I am. Is my is this tied to Azure at all right now? This is just an application on my computer. It's not. I could actually show you that if I flip to page two, we can see I just have these cards set up. And who is signed in via user principal name? Well, my computer's name is Nick, and my login name to my computer is Nick Lee. This isn't in Lee at Pragmatic Works. It's not. Uh, and because of that, 
um, because I'm not actually don't have this published out to the service yet, it's kind of hard to test locally here. To do most of your testing, you're going to have to publish it first and then test it. All right. So that's why this user principal name, we can't really do much testing here. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip back to page one. Actually, yeah, I'm actually going to leave it on page two, matter of fact. And then I'm going to publish this out to the service. Yes, I'm going to save it. I am going to publish this out to the service and choose my ADW RLS workspace. Success. All right. Let me pull that bad boy over. Here we go. It's published. Now we're looking at that new report I just published here. Notice now it's already defaulted on page two because that's the page I published it on. Notice now it says in Lee at pragmaticworks.com. It doesn't say my computer name, my domain name, and then my username. No, it actually pulls it from me being signed in to the Power BI service and is able to detect that. Now, if I go to page one here, let me load, let these visuals load. Come on, Bing Maps, do it for me. You know, we're going to see it start to populate all the different counties that we have available. Come on. All right, you can see, I'm not going to let it just finish loading here, but you can see it's populating all the counties that we had available to begin with. All right, so let's go ahead and go modify these security settings of this report or this data set. So I'm going to go down here to, actually, let me do it this way. I'm going to go to the workspace title. I'm going to go to the data sets tab. Number two is the one we're working on, demo two. I'm going to hit the little ellipses, go to security. And in security, I can actually modify, add people, individual people I want, again, or I can just add an entire group of people in my active directory. So I'm just going to add the consulting department. So if I choose consulting, I go and hit add, bada bing, bada boom, hit save, ready to rock. And now let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to hit test as role. And remember, currently, it's signed in as me, right? So if I'm doing this re report as a consumer, me, my counties that I have access to is Midwest United States here. You know, we have Ohio, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, stuff like that. That's my settings. Now, I can actually modify this to test it as other individual people. Let me show you how. So if I go up here with this now viewing as, instead of making it purely dynamic, I'm going to manually change it. Instead of... It letting it just do dynamic because it's only ever going to be me if it's dynamic just for testing purposes i could add other people other people in here for instance i could add brian knight and let's test it as if we were brian knight viewing this data boom he is you know western united states has all his calories over there and i can do it again let me try someone else real quick do one more test i could try adam jorgensen see what states and counties he has access to we see he has a lot of the states that are in the south so that's that information and it's dynamic and it's working as intended and all we did for a role was add that user principal name function in there all right so that's a basic dynamic kind of setup for real level security let me go ahead and close this example down and let's move on to the next section here so the next thing i want to talk about is we currently in that data model have it set up to work in a kind of like a one to many type of relationship is what we were just working with well what we have here is a many to many type scenario as in we have i have one more doctor in here in this example that i had before but this is just, this isn't exactly the same as the actual data model this is just example data that i had pulled up the, the issue why that last data model wouldn't have worked in this scenario is because we had in that last data model a you know only each individual hospital is only assigned to one doctor or one consultant however you look at it here now in this case in this scenario we might have multiple doctors or multiple consultants assigned to multiple hospitals right so we might have you know like for instance here user id number one which is adam has access to to the state or state of or state ID or provider ID or however you want to look at it here. This is looking at it from a sales perspective, so it's a little different than our data model. But he has access to uh, IDs of one and three. But if you also look at Paul Turley, 
he has access to state ID of two, right? That's a little different. That's normal. But then the real kicker is Brian. Brian has access, which is user ID of two, has access to three and four. This leaves us with one common denominator here. That is they both have access to this state of number three. So that means they're going to have, you know, some of the hospitals or a singular hospital is assigned to multiple users and multiple users are assigned to a single hospital. This is what's called a many to many support. This is a many to many type of relationship setup that we have here. Now, what you're actually not going to see in the data model is any, if you're familiar with how relationships work, you're not going to see a star to star. You're not going to see many to many. This is many to many support. We could bypass the inherent issues that many to many table or relationships have by using what's called a bridge table, as you can see in this user state bridge. So, we have this user state bridge table that allows us to kind of do some what's also known as cross filtering across multiple tables to have, you know, multiple, you know, uh, multiple states, you know, filtered down by multiple users and vice versa. And we all have that working here. Like I said, this is called many to many support. So if you run into this scenario where you can't get her to work, this is where uh, it will really start to become helpful here. So let's go ahead and, and deal with that. Let's go ahead and deal with a minute and many uh, support issue that you may be having in Power BI when it comes to road level security. So here's that third report. Again, looks exactly the same, but the data model is different. Now, if I look at the actual model view, you can see that this kind of setup is very similar to what I had in that presentation. Now, Excuse me. There's a few differences here that wasn't there before. For instance, if we look at the hospital general information, there is no column for doctor email or doctor name or anything like that because it's all tied to individual doctors uh, being assigned to individual hospitals. All right, we all have that all set up in this data model. This data model is just structured a bit differently. So this bridge table, which is also known as like a scenarios table or a profile table that we have here. This bridge table uh, acts is, is able to act through multiple different types of scenarios, as in which users can see which hospitals. All right. So if I deployed this out right now and started testing that that uh, that ro roles on it. By the way, if I look at the report view, I should have already made a role here. Make it work. I did. It's exactly the same as last one. We had that dynamic security with user principal name on there. If I deployed this out right now, as it stands, it actually wouldn't work. And now some of you might be able to tell me why, but I imagine that some of you will not. And let me just jump back to my presentation real quick to kind of show you why it won't work. So why this wouldn't work if I deployed it as is, is because of how our data model is structured currently with the relationships. You see that the uh, username is tied to the user principal name, right? That is our row level security. So our user principal name is then filtering down our provider user bridge table along this relationship that exists right here, all right? So the filter gets applied this direction. Notice these, these little arrows that are on the screen, these little tiny little arrows that are part of the relationship mean a lot. They're indicative of saying a, which direction filters are allowed so it's saying the user table can filter down the bridge table but as soon as that happens let me go back as soon as that happens you can see this relationship is saying the hospital general information table can filter down the provider user bridge table but we want our user table to be able to filter down our hospital general information table and as it stands, we have this kind of breakpoint right here where we can't get past because we have a single direction filtering going the wrong way. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, break down why and or how we could fix that on this on this scenario. And actually, we're going to go over a couple different ways to fix that. So the first way we could fix it is the easy way to fix it. Uh, what I mean by the easy way is it's literally a couple clicks on the mouse and it fixes it, but the problem with doing it this way, it kind of hurts the integrity of the data model because it makes it perform worse. Because uh, when 
I'm not going to go over why many of the mini supports is is hard for your computer or hard for your data model rather. Um, but I will say that you can trust me when I say doing it this way, especially on the bigger the data set, the bigger the data set, the more performance implications you're going to have if you use this method. And we're going to go over the better method later. But for now, let's go ahead and do this. So what we could do is I could actually go in and modify this relationship. There's a few different ways you can do it. Easiest way to modify a relationship is to just literally double click on it. I'm double clicking on that line there. And notice here it says the cardinality is many to one. That's what we want. But this cross filter direction is set to single. Well, I want it to be a bi-directional relationship or a both direction relationship. So I can actually switch this little drop down to both. And then there's this next setting, apply security filter in both directions. That's exactly what we're modifying here. We're modifying the security filter. So for us, in this case, we need to check the box for apply security filter in both directions and then select OK. All right, now that that's done, you can actually see this relationship, the line between this relationship actually points both directions, which means now we have a path or like a pipeline for getting from our DIM user table to the user bridge. And then we can also go from the user bridge to the hospital general information, which, you know, in layman's terms, our user table can now filter down our, our general information table. All right, so that's kind of the idea here. So if I publish this out, if I go to home, hit publish, Save. We can run through this real quick. Publish this to Azure Data Week, Red Level Security. There we go. All right, let's pull this up in our handy dandy window here. And then we can view that report. Again, it's going to look exactly the same. Let's go ahead and jump right in and modify the, the security settings. So if I go to data sets, the mini to mini dynamic security setting, uh, dynamic security data set here, let's click on that ellipses, go to security, and I can add a group again. So I'm going to add the Pragmatic Works Consulting Group again. I'm going to go ahead and select add, and then save, uh, save, yep. And then let's go ahead and start doing some testing. So I'm going to test as a role. So currently it's set up as dynamic where it only sees my information, all right? So we can see I have some, some states in uh, the, the Northwest. I could go ahead and change this as well. I could look at, let's look at Adam Jorgensen. He is assigned to some of the Southern states like Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, et cetera. Uh, he has that information, right? So these, he has his own set of states here that previously he was alone here. But I added another person to this data model. Excuse me. All right. And I added another person to this data model. And if I hit out of Adam and look for Joe Abbott, we can actually see if we're looking at Joe Abbott's settings, he actually shares. Oh, it's not working as I planned it here exactly. For some reason, that's not working. Um, but Joe Abbott actually shares in this data model. Geez, I wish I could fix this real quick. Joe Abbott actually shares some states with both Adam um, as well as me. And let me see if I can do a quick fix on this. We're running short of time, so I can't spend too much time. Let me try to fix it on the background really quick. This is number three. There. Okay, it looks good there, J Abbott. Oh, I see where I messed up. All right, I can actually fix this super quick. Give me one minute. I actually typoed his name wrong when I was setting up this data model, and that's what caused it. 
So I'm going to hit save. Let me pull up here to a data refresh. Boom. Notice his last name had one T before. Now it has two. All right. So let's go ahead and republish this again. If I hit save, by the way, this is a very common question. What happens if you publish a Power BI report with the same exact nomenclature? You get this option, replacing data set. You already have data set three. Are you sure you want to replace it? Well, yes, in fact, I do. And if you do this, it literally gets rid of that uh, Power BI report, and unless your company has some type of backups in place, you could actually completely like delete reports on accident that are in the service, and it could really mess you up. So just for the record, be careful doing that. But I just republished it. I overwrote it. So let me go back to my data sets here. Minute to minute security. Go to security settings. Notice that when you do that, though, this is actually a really cool functionality. If you have row level security applied, it just overrides and inherits the previous row level security. So I had a role called dynamic security and pragmatic works consulting is already assigned. It inherits that that role that was in place. All right. It was really cool. So let me go ahead and run a test on this role. And this time, if we look at Joe Abbott, I mean, deselect this. This time, if we select Joe Abbott and hit apply. There we go. Now it's working. So we'll see that Joe has access to Florida and Georgia. Well, so does Adam. And he also has access up here to North Dakota and South Dakota. Well, so do I. And he shares some stuff with Brian and shares some stuff with Paul Turley. So they're all kind of, he is a part of every, he's a part of some of the same hospitals that other people are. And this wouldn't have worked in our last data model. We couldn't have done this in our last data model without setting up that many to many support in our current data model. All right. So pretty cool information. All right, so I'm going to kind of jump into this next one really fast here. Uh, we're running short on time. I'm going to try to get through all this. So like I said, if I go too fast, I apologize, but we do have recordings. So that being said, let me move this out the way, and let's continue here. So we can actually be a little bit more dynamic as well uh, when it comes to DAX, when it comes to mini-to-mini -mini support. Now, mini-to-mini -mini support that we just set up was easy. All we had to do is turn on bidirectional relationship, and then we could use that user principal name function and look up everything that we needed. But this, consider this option if you have a larger data set, because this actually doesn't enable bidirectional relationships, and instead uh, you actually use DAX to bypass that relationship problem of only filtering one direction. We actually use DAX to bypass it, all right? So in this case, we are going to filter a hospital down to only return values associated with the user logged in by using DAX. And in this case, we're actually going to be using the lookup value function. You can also use like a filter function to accomplish this. There's other functions you could probably use as well. But I use the lookup value function for this scenario. All right, so let's go ahead and test that bad boy out. So we go ahead and go to our demo number four. So here's demo number four. Again, looks exactly the same, right? But in this case, if we go look back at our look at back at our modeling view, we can see that this relationship setup we have here is back to that one-way relationship. We don't have it set up in bi-direction or in both directions rather, we have it a single single direction relationship going. And we're going to leave it that way because performance is a lot better. And when I say a lot better, it, is, it really is so much better to have it this way, for especially with large data sets, because bidirectional relationships often cause what's called Cartesian products. And when your data model is trying to perform calculations, it makes it uh, very difficult to do so. Uh, so we're going to leave our direction, single direction in this case, because we're assuming this data set's large, but it is a very small data set. That's why it still performed fine before. But we're going to leave it this way like this for now. And we're actually going to go ahead and go back and create a new dynamic role that works for many to many support without turning on bidirectional relationships. All right. So I'm going to go into manage roles. And... Let's go ahead and uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and create a new role. And instead, I'm going to call it dynamic security and kind of keep that theme going here. 
And instead of typing in and hard coding any type of value, we're going to use that lookup value function, like I said. So we're going to call on a few tables that we already have. So if you have like a SQL background, this is very similar to like a SQL, you know, type of join. Uh, that's the, the syntax here that I'm kind of kind of going over here. So we're actually going to base this off of our actual bridge table. Let's see. No, not there. Based off provider user bridge on provider ID. We're actually going to do it based off of my bridge table that I have in place uh, on provider ID. And instead, we're not going to be hard coding anything in here. We're also not going to just use that user principal name like we were doing before. We're not doing that. We're actually going to be writing some DAX here and getting exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to start this off by writing up lookup value function. All right, we're going to use the lookup value function. And first off, um, the, the idea of this function, this lookup value function, is we want to tell this function what value we want to be returned or returned back to us, which in this case, we want to return back the value that's inside of our bridge table for the provider ID. So we only want to return back the results where the provider ID is in the bridge table for a particular user. All right, that's the idea, that's the goal we're looking for. So first off, uh, let's go ahead and match this based on our provider user bridge table, provider ID. And now this is a little bit dangerous how I'm writing this right now because there's no IntelliSys dummy and I could hypothetically typo it, right? But I'm doing my best to not do so right now, right? Because we are short on time. So now we want to bring back the provider ID where the username from our user table matches the user principal name, all right? So we want to do that. So first I'm going to bring back our username from our user table. User name, almost typed with there. And then we want to make sure that matches the user principal name. User principal. I can type this anyway, but I'm going to use best practices and use all caps. User principal name. So we want to make sure that matches. Now I'm going to add one other secondary uh, type of join here to make sure this brings back the proper value that we're looking for. The second value that we're going to return is between the user bridge table and the hospital table. So uh, based on the provider user bridge table, we're going to return provider ID. According to what the hospital general information tables provider ID is. So we're going to match that up there. I'm going to join on provider ID there. And then I'm going to close this. I'm going to hit the checkbox. Hopefully it doesn't spit any errors on me. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Let me see what I did wrong. I had this code working. Obviously tested. All right, let's see here. Let me just double check some of my stuff that I have. See, this is what happens when you try to hard code things and without having just pasting it in or from DAX. So, user principal name. See, dim user, username. So, I tried to do a shortcut here and it ended up biting us. Line three, set two. Sorry, guys, give me one second to debug this a little bit. Oh, you I got see. Got some it. suggestions. Wait. Yep. <laughs> Boom. 
Let's see here. Nope, not there. That, that, that. All right, hold on a second. So let's hide that. Dim users missing a quote. All right, yeah, that's what it did. And it's still having a hard time here. Where is this messed up? All right, so for this case, uh, I'm going to have to skip it, unfortunately. You can take my word on it. Um, I will hopefully be able to release a working copy of this to everyone that's attending this class or and requesting it. But this DAX should work for this example on exactly what's going on here. I literally just tested this, and I'm not seeing it. Still not seeing what the problem is. Is there a space in between after dim user and the... Nope. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. No worries. All right. So I have that set up and I'm going to hit check. Still having some problems here. Yeah, these are actual quotes. These are actual quotes. So. Oh, you're right. The paste, the paste got messed up there. Good call, Mario. Good call. That's weird. It didn't it just do a plain text transfer. All right, and then something happened here in my data model, apparently, that I tested this on and changed something and it messed up. So I can, apparently I have a key column here that has multiple values in it. Somehow that messed up. Um, let's see here. All right, so if this DAX is working correctly, we only have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to do something super fast. Let's pretend I published this out and it all worked, right? That's the whole point of this. Like there's something, it's very small in this data model that's messed up that's not working. I had it working and it's not working now. So regardless, let me do one more thing I want to talk to you guys about really quick. We have a couple minutes left and that is modifying a relevant security setup to work with a parent child type of hierarchy. This is very common and easy to work through. So for instance, uh, this is also known as a self-referencing self type of table. Yeah, Henry, that might be where I messed it up. But this is where, uh, we, like I said, we have to move on real quick here. Um, this is based off of a, uh, like I said, with a parent-child hierarchy, looking from a managerial standpoint. So we can see at the top of our hierarchy, this is just arbitrary. I just made this up. At the top of our hierarchy is Adam Jorgensen. We see his manager ID on the right side. He doesn't have a manager. He's at the top of the list of the hierarchy. Then we see Brian Knight uh, reports to user ID number one, which is Adam Jorgensen. Then we see users Nick Lee and Paul Turley both report to Brian Knight directly, right? So we want to be able to see Brian Knight should be able to see everything under him in the hierarchy. Adam should see everything under him in the hierarchy. Whereas like me, I would be Joe Abbott reports directly to three, Nick Lee, which would be me, which means that I should be able to see my information and Joe Abbott's information, but no one else's, all right? So we can actually flatten out this hierarchy on a self-referencing table using this cool function in DAX called path, all right? So the path function uh, and combined with the OR operator, which is the double pipe delimiter, uh, for each flattened level of the hierarchy will allow us to kind of self-reference here and create this. And kind of create this working. Now, Liz, is it possible? Is it okay if I go over like two minutes? You can go over as long as you want. Oh, as long as all right, we're gonna be here for another hour, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so all right, I'm gonna pull up a uh, example number five here that I have set up of being able to kind of self-reference to view at those different levels here. All right. So what we're gonna do here is I have to get some DAX ready to copy paste because we're short on time. All right. Yep. And yeah, now that I think about it, Henry, I think you're exactly right. That's where I messed up that role. But anyways, we're going to move on. Pretend it never happened. That last one worked great. Now we're doing this demo. All right. So we are actually going to look at our data model here. If I actually look at the data view, we actually see in our user dimension. Here we go. In our user dimension here, we see 
that we have this kind of manager hierarchy set up in place, the same as the, the, the slide. So like I said, this is a very common solution if you have a self-referencing type of relationship, and this is how you deal with it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new column on this user table. So if I create a new column, let me go ahead and grab some DAX that I have off screen, and hopefully this DAX is correct too. All right. So let me go ahead and grab that. Now this, this DAX is going to be working fine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to paste in this DAX here real quick. Okay, it did not like that. New column. So this is the DAX code that we have here. It is using the path function, which allows us to kind of flatten out this table a little bit and, and kind of self-reference and check across multiple things. So if I hit enter here and save this column, we could see that according to the organizational hierarchy, user ID of number one, user ID of number one can see all of these information, right? And then user ID of number two could see himself. He could see mine because I'm under him. And he can also see Paul Tur or uh, Joe Abbott's because he's under me. And also Paul Turley, obviously, as well, because this is a direct report, so on and so forth. And we could see uh, user ID of number three here, which is me. I could see myself. And I can see Joe Abbott's information as well. And that's it. So that's how this kind of path function works. But to get this to work with row level security, we're actually going to be creating a few new columns here that we could actually reference. All right. So I'm going to create another column in this table. And call it organization level four. So I'm going to do a lookup and see who can view uh, at, at, at level four of the organization, how much do you get to see? So if I hit enter, we can see, all right, level four, which is the lowest level because we have uh, levels zero, one, two, and three. So that's four levels. We can see if you're at level four, which is just Joe Abbott in this case, he would only be able to see his own information and that's it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this code out and just do the same thing for all the different levels of the organization. All right, so organization level three. Let's modify that code a little bit. So we can see at the third level, which is me and Paul Turley, we can see what we have access to. And we can see at the third level, I can see my information and Joe Abbott's information, and Paul Turley can only see his own information. And we're going to run this down all the way to uh, organization level one. Create two more real quick, organization level two. Organization level one. Oh, wait, I actually didn't change the values on level two. I need to fix that. So one, there we go. And then level two here, got to fix that. So now we kind of see the structure of how this is going to work. And some of you might be guessing how we're going to set up this row level security. All right. Now, now we have our table set up in such a way where we can actually reference instead of, you know, self-referencing itself, we set up new columns using that path function to be able to determine, you know, which users can see which exact record here. All right. So if I go back to the modeling tab and go to manage roles, I could create a new role, and we're going to call it dynamic security, of course. Keep in theme here. And I'm going to base this off of the user dimension of the username. So what we're going to be doing here, instead of doing like we did before, uh, doing a lookup value, we're actually just going to do, in this case, based off of user principal name. All right? But we're not just doing user principal name. We want to see, we want to do a check to see if the user principal name for that record is true or if it, or if the, sorry for scrolling, or if the org level four is equal to the user principal name, because that org level four column is going to be indicative of what, you know, who could actually see it, or we want to test all the way down to org level one, right? So let me actually 
grab some code here so I know it's correct. There we go. And we run that down all the way. So we're checking either the user currently logged in or we're checking each individual level of the organization to see if they can actually view that information. If I hit save. There we go. It's going to work. And now if I view this as a role for dynamic security, I'm just going to be able to see myself, which should be, you know, Midwest United States. Oh, it's not doing it right because user principal name C is my domain name, uh, not my actual sign-in name. So to test this again, we have to publish it. And we're almost done, guys. I'm just going to publish this real quick, and we're going to test it out, and make sure it works as intended, which it certainly should. All right. So Azure Data Week RLS workspace. Got it. All right. So now last thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull up the Power BI service here. And we're going to pretend our number four is here working as well. Modify the security settings. I'm going to add Pragmatic Works Consulting Group. Add. Save it. And then we're going to test this rollout like we did everything else. And now... When I look up Adam Jorgensen as a role, it should show everyone, right? Because he's the top level of the hierarchy. So we're almost done, guys. Thanks for, if you're still here, thanks for bearing with me. So, so if I had Adam Jorgensen here, if I were Adam Jorgensen viewing this, he should see everything. So really, not much is going to change because he should see all the roles that are assigned to everyone. As you can see here. But if I switch it to me, now let's switch it to uh, switch it to Brian and apply it. Come on, Betsy. Well, it's not propagating that change. It's not propagating that change. So I must have still some remnant of messing up my data model earlier, of which should be causing this problem. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to hold you guys any longer. I'm not going to be sitting here debugging this issue that I literally had working earlier today that I must have messed something up. But that being said, thank you everyone for coming to this presentation. Again, these sessions are recorded. This DAX code, I could verify works out correctly. I promise you, I just messed up the data model somewhere and I regret it. But that being said, this DAX code does work, and hopefully this gives you some insight to uh, getting real-level security set up at your company and working as intended. All right, so thanks again. My name is Nick Lee, everybody. Uh, let me pull up my information again real quick. So if anyone ever wants to know a little bit more about me, like I said, feel free to check this out. Let's see, let's screen share this. Feel free to check me out uh, at my Twitter is at back to sequel. My blog is uh, back to sequel .com. I talk about this stuff all the time uh, and, and I work out remedies for literally debugging problems just like this very regularly. So make sure you follow me and check for any updates or anything along those lines. And thank you everyone for attending this presentation and I hope you all have a great rest of the class. Thank you everybody. And I'll get the questions that were asked over to Nick um, and he works right down, right down the way from me. So I will get them to him. So thanks everybody.